Hello everyone again. Uh, welcome to this fifth video on in the series Getting Started at Flexible Blended Teaching. Uh, the lean approach referred to there is to minimize the workload for lecturers who may need to deal with both on and on and off campus students uh, during this COVID crisis and maybe even beyond. Okay, so this fifth video is on continuous assessment. These are, the, these are assignment types that uh, can be used online. Some suggestions for assignment types. Uh, there are plenty others as well, but these probably give you an overview of, view of the most common ones. Um, I could say, particularly during COVID, if it's difficult to get people into examination rooms, consider replacing the final exam with totally with continuous assessment. Now, I have mixed feelings on that. I'm... Uh, I do like the authenticity of of the assignments, the continuous assignments we give students during uh, term time, but I also have issues with the potential for cheating. And I find that I would prefer to have it a mix of continuous assessment and final exam where the grade of one corroborates the grade of the other. Okay, those are the assignment types we're going to look at now. Let's take them one at a time. Quizzes. Now, a lot of people consider that quizzes really don't measure deeply, so they're not good to really assess understanding of a course. They can be, but it can be very difficult to design good multiple choice uh, questions that do that. Uh, so this might be for some subjects, say for mathematical or STEM, and it may, uh, may only test part of it. In fact, for other areas, it could test part of it as well. So it could be part of your strategy, okay? Now, there are different types of questions, but I would say the multiple choice uh, question where you pick one right answer and the others are uh, distractors or incorrect answers uh, is probably the easiest one to work with. It's not suitable for higher learning outcomes, as I said. It does require considerable effort. You must consider that. Now, there are a few tricks to shorten that, but uh, it does that. So if you have scale of your large classroom, it's probably worthwhile. Or if you're going to be teaching this uh, subject or module for a number of years, that probably makes it worthwhile as well. And there are some tricks and shortcuts to make it a bit easier. Okay, essays and reports. Well, this would be a traditional type of uh, assignment we would give students. I have to say that I would consider these as quite stressful students sitting on their own at home trying to write an essay, sort of not knowing where to start, as it were. Uh, there is the concern about plagiarism as well, and cheating, uh, buying essays, copying from others, getting help from others, uh, although we have detection systems for plagiarism. Um, in grading, it, it can be quite a workload in grading, but there are some tools that will help. For instance, uh, having canned responses, where that could be as simple as a Word document with standard responses in it, which you copy and paste and give back to the student. Uh, you can have rubrics built into the grading system in a, in a virtual learning environment where you have various criteria under which you're going to grade it. And then you have various classifications uh, from very poor or uh, to excellent uh, for each criteria. And then it will tot up the marks for you. That can save you a bit of work. Uh, you can have systems where you can annotate, in other words, you can bring the, the document submitted onto a screen and which you can write on top of that screen and put in comments that way. Another thing as far as the grading workload is concerned is maybe you should consider peer assessment. Um, that's where students grade each other. Mathematical and design problems. I've sort of taken these out separately in, in this because Sometimes these require students to use pen and paper, and you want to see what they've done on pen and paper. So they may need to scan or photograph. These often, as well, need specialist software. So for equations, which a lot of people like, prefer to put on paper, you can get specialist software that allows them to write those equations, and they can submit those documents. Or if it was a design problem, it could be a 3D design modeling system that generates files that can be submitted. Um, Student presentation is probably a, an assignment that I quite like because um, I feel it's more difficult to cheat. This would be an assignment if the students were remote, they'd give it live online. They'd often, you've probably done this, maybe where they give presentation in a class. Okay, there can be a lot of work in the grading of this. 
uh, I would imagine. But then again, maybe peer assessment could help in this. Now, I've just mentioned peer assessment a few times. I will deal with that another time. Peer assessment is where the students grade each other. And it is quite a powerful system where students uh, not only learn, well, not only does it reduce your workload, uh, but also the students learn a lot from doing that assessment. Uh, asynchronous discussion. Now, this is a type of assignment that I feel is just not given enough attention at all. This is where they go onto a discussion board, they put in their opinions, they react to other people's opinions, and it takes place over a few days. So their text-based contributions over several days, the students would have to make multiple considered contributions. The contributions would be based on evidence of reading. Students will find this less stressful, I think, than an essay. Um, and also possibly less stressful than a verbal discussion where they have to contribute in class. Uh, so it might suit the shyer students who can be considered in their contributions. And it can be possibly more accurately graded by the instructor because you do have access to all their contributions after it's over. Again, it is quite a workload in grading it, so you might consider peer assessment in that. And the design is important because there are certain timings everybody has to be on within this, the same timeline, the same start point to end point, contributing to each other. Group projects. Uh, this is where students can develop team skills. They may take on different roles and, and their contributions may be different. They may need to use collaboration tools. So if you're going to do, if you have students that are online uh, that are not on campus, you may need to provide them with tools to allow to collaborate. To be honest with you, I would recommend some of these tools for on-campus collaboration as well, particularly shared documentation like you have in Google Docs or Office 365. Uh, they might take part in discussion boards, which allows you to have a record of the discussions that went on, which can be quite useful. Or they may have live meetings if they're off campus on Zoom or they can meet Zoom or they can meet together on campus. Uh, I know plenty of students that really hate group projects and one of the one of their uh, biggest complaints are free riding by students who don't pull their weight in it. And that's why, again, I would suggest maybe peer assessment or peer evaluation here. Students will be honest and they will penalize people who are not pulling their weight. Uh, physical projects and field exercises. Again, this is these might be types of projects where a paper submission or electronic submission on like a, a text document may not be suitable. What we really need is evidence of the work they carried out in the field. Uh, so um, maybe photos and videos may help here. Uh, so the skills, what skills would you need for continuous assessment, we'll say? What do you need to learn to do to be able to enable these types of continuous assessment? Well, in quizzes, you need to be able to author questions. There's a certain art in that, and it's worth developing, and there are some tips and tricks for doing that. Uh, how to create a question bank in the virtual learning environment that you're using. How to build, uh, you tend to build question banks banks separately from the actual quiz. Then you build the quiz from the question banks and those quizzes will have certain dates that they're available, they'll be scheduled. Okay, uh, if you're doing essays and things like that or even photos, any documents or uh, files that they have to submit, you'll have to set up a Dropbox for them to submit and you'll have to learn how to grade and how to provide feedback on that. Um, you may have to use the plagiarism detection system that's supplied and also interpret that because a plagiarism detection system will give you a score and generally a score of 10% would mean that there's no real plagiarism there. It's spotted a few phrases and things like that. Uh, but a plagiarism score of 80% is very high level of plagiarism. But in between that, you have to figure out what's allowable and what's not allowable. When you will investigate further, it may be okay and when it's definitely plagiarism, or maybe scores at which you wouldn't even bother to look at any further. You may have to learn to set up groups in the virtual learning environment, for, for instance, for group work. If you decide to go for asynchronous discussion, that's discussion uh, in a discussion forum, there is actually quite a lot of detail in the design of that, and I've created a separate video to um, help you design an asynchronous discussion. Again, peer assessment, there is a lot of uh, what would you say? There's both technical skills and other skills 
require to do peer assessment well, so I've created a separate video for that too. Okay, that's the end of uh, our fifth video on continuous assessment. We have one more video to go in this particular series, and that's on your next steps. Having looked at those, the first five videos, you say, what will I do next to build my course? Thanks for listening.